This is a 2006 Ford F-150 4.2 liter. Now we're going to install a new clutch in it today. And when you look this one up in the catalog, there might be a little bit of uh, a choice or confusion there. These trucks were originally built with a self-adjusting clutch. Now a self-adjusting clutch can be identified by the three springs on the top of the cover for this design and these ramps on the top of the cover. So if you're curious about what clutch is in this particular series of truck, there's a hole on the side of the transmission here. You can remove the rubber plug and you can look up in there and if you see a self-adjusting style, that's what it had. But it's not really important to decide or figure out which one was in it, it's which one would you like to install because we offer a non-self-adjusting clutch for this same truck and there's no modifications required. You can remove the self-adjuster, put in the non-self-adjusting, take out a non-self-adjusting, put in a self-adjusting, no modifications to the vehicle. Now, when we put this kit in today, we're going to start with a new flywheel, a new slave cylinder and bearing assembly. The kit includes the pilot bearing, an alignment tool to center the disc on the pilot bearing, the clutch disc, and depending upon the part number you select, the non-self-adjusting clutch or the self-adjusting clutch. Now there's been a little bit of confusion in the field. Do I have to do anything to install the self-adjusting clutch? Well, there's one thing you have to do, and it's pretty simple, and it's common with all the clutches. You have to clean this friction surface right here with some type of brake clean or alcohol, something that doesn't leave any residue behind. So no solvents from the solvent tank, nothing else. Don't dip this part. There's no need to take this clutch cover assembly, the self-adjuster, and take it to the solvent tank and dip it. And also, very, very important, don't take the clutch, the disc, and the flywheel and bolt it up because you heard somewhere that you had to adjust it before installation. Not required. So don't play with it on the bench. Don't test it. Put it in the vehicle. Make sure it's bled and enjoy that new self-adjusting clutch. So let's take a look and see how we install a self-adjusting clutch on a Ford F-150 4.2 liter. Now in order for Tim to remove the transmission, he had to remove the stick shift, disconnected the battery cables, the drive shaft, the clutch hydraulic pressure line, We've got a couple of electrical connections that have to be disconnected, the front sway bar brackets on both sides, remove it, lower the sway bars down. We need that room to get the transmission out. The exhaust system is removed on both sides of the engine. Starter. Fuel line bracket on the back of the transmission. The exhaust hanger at the rear transmission mount. The rear transmission mount and the cross member. Transmission input shaft is all cleaned up. We're going to open up the grease pack here, spline lubricant, and just put a light film of grease on the teeth. Then with clean hands, pick up the clutch disc, slide it onto the input shaft, slide the grease around, pull it off, index it, and repeat that process a couple times. The grease is just there to help prevent corrosion from building up on the disc on the splines. And no anti-seize. Anti-seize right here is the wrong stuff. It'll fling off, contaminate the friction surfaces, and then we put anti-seize on friction surfaces. We start the bolts for the flywheel by hand, use a ratchet, seat them, and then come back with a torque wrench, and usually a two-step process, going around the bolts in a staggered fashion to the final torque. The pilot bearing is installed. That's pretty simple. We just tap it in with a hammer, sometimes use a socket, just very carefully and slowly tap it in. Next, I need to clean the friction surface of the flywheel and the pressure plate. Good clean shop towel. Good spray of brake clean. And very carefully clean this surface. Flip the rag over, spray a little bit, repeat this process. We want this flywheel surface and the friction surface of the pressure plate casting grease-free oil free, nice and clean, but we never ever clean the friction material itself. Flywheel surface and pressure plate surface are both clean. This flywheel does have dowel pins. 
So I'm just going to get it started on the pins. Okay, now we're on the pins, and you could put this in first. It's kind of like your choice which way you go. I put the alignment tool in, picked up the pilot. I'm going to check this very carefully. Push in and slide it out. I want to make sure that disc is really centered on there. If that disc is not centered, it's going to be a battle when it's time to put that transmission in. We're going to drop of medium strength Loctite on the pressure plate bolts, and we also did that to the flywheel bolts. Now all the bolts are just seated lightly. Kind of a last check. Well, that just slides right in and out of there. No bind. So we're lined up. Tightening process. Sorry, no air tools, no air ratchets, hand ratchets, maybe three-quarter turn at a time in a staggered pattern until it seats on the flywheel. Then we'll come back with a torque wrench. The bolts are all seated by hand with a ratchet. Come back with a torque wrench. Then we'll go a two-step process. Go about halfway to final torque. This is about 20 foot-pound. Then I'll come back and do it one more time to 41. No, we gotta just put the transmission in and bleed the system. But did you notice this flywheel and clutch never rotated the whole time we were tightening it? This is kind of a shop made flywheel lock. That's a piece of automatic transmission flex plate. I cut a section of it out. It matches the tooth of the ring gear. We use one bolt, put it in the engine, and this has done a really surprising job of locking these in so we can tighten them, loosen them. Pretty handy made from scrap. To remove the master cylinder, line, and reservoir as an assembly, I'm going to start with the clutch start switch. It snaps on on both sides of the switch body, remove the cover, remove the switch. Use a thin screwdriver, get behind the black keeper on the push rod, and just pry the push rod off. Remove the reservoir from the firewall, and then it's just a twist to get the master cylinder to unlock from the clutch pedal assembly and carefully pull the assembly out as one piece. Now the bleeding process. We're going to approach this a little bit differently. Just about the same way we've talked about for all the rangers and everything else we've done. Master cylinder reservoir high. Coming down into the master cylinder. But notice the angle. It's not horizontal like it sits in the truck. It's push rod down. The fluid comes in here, makes a quick turn at the center line of the bore, goes into the pressure area, and then exits through the line. So in this attitude right here, any air bubbles that are in there can come up and out through the top. I'm going to put some fluid in, but we're going to start to see bubbles coming out right away, and then I'm going to push on the push rod, just little strokes, that will exercise the valve, and the bubbles will keep coming out, fluid goes in. Let me put some fluid in. Okay, there's a fresh container of brake fluid. 
them in there. And you can see the bubbles are already coming out all by itself. Now, all I'm going to do is get down and do those little short strokes on that push rod. And this system is just going to start burping bubbles out. And this will continue for just a couple minutes. But this process lets the air do what it wants to do, go up and out in a fluid. And you don't need to push real hard or real far. Short strokes are better. We're just actuating that little valve inside it. So when the valve opens up, exposes the port, the air bubbles are getting out of there, going up through the reservoir. And the other thing we do and recommend is just to tap on the line. I'm just using my fingers right now, just tapping on it. But you can take a tool, a screwdriver, extension, creates extension maybe, and just tap on it, and that loosens those bubbles up again. Now how do you know when you're done? Well right now I can take the piston assembly and compress it all the way until it bottoms out. That's indicating there's air in there. But I can't compress fluid. It takes less than an eighth of an inch for the valve to close, the piston to seat completely, and we start to create pressure. So when I can only move this push rod about one eighth of an inch, and then it stops. And it is, as we say, like you're pushing against a brick wall. It doesn't move. That's my indication that the system is blipped. And I'll actually measure it, mark it, make sure, because this is the critical part. Then all we do is a gravity bleed in the truck, and we never touch the clutch pedal until it's time to actually release the clutch. Now, how do you know when you're done? The air bubbles are going to come out for a few minutes as you exercise the piston and the valve assembly. So to test your work, I'm pushing in lightly on the push rod. I made a baseline mark it's to the right. And I'm going to push in harder. We're going to see how far this piston moves. And remember, the line is not connected to anything. This is deadheaded. That system is bled. We're ready to install. Now, what makes this a little bit of an interesting situation is this system has the potential to trap an air bubble in it. Let me get a water bottle and I'll show you. Now let's use this water bottle to illustrate what's going on in this master cylinder and why this is a little bit of a challenge. The brake fluid comes in up here, comes down through here, and at the center line of the bore it comes in to the pressure chamber. But there's a little valve inside here that right now it's open. That valve is open so fluid can come in, fluid can go back out. As soon as I push forward on the push rod, that valve seats, blocks the fluid from going up and out, and the fluid can only go down. Look at this as it is horizontal in the truck. So here's the center line of the bore, represented by the cap. Fluid comes in. How do you get this trapped air bubble out up here in the top? As long as this system is horizontal and you're working with the push rod or vacuum bleeding or reverse fluid injection, any of those techniques, that air bubble is just sitting there. The only way I think to get it out easily is to tip the entire system like we had it when we had it stretched out, let the air bubbles go out the top. So we're just exercising that little tappet valve and the bubbles go out the top. Didn't waste any fluid, it's ready to install. Now the master cylinder and line are bled. Now we're going to do a gravity bleed on the slave cylinder. We've got a piece of tubing on the bleed screw. Tim, go ahead and insert the line. He's just going to push the line up in there after he takes the cap off. 
We should hear one nice snap. Give it a little tug. And the line is secured. For the gravity bleed, open the bleed screw. Tim's up top. He's already got the cap off. And the fluid is going to start to flow through there. I have a little difficulty rotating the bleed screw. This piece of tubing is pretty stiff. Okay, we want to flush about a reservoir of fluid through. And you may see some bubbles come through the tube. Those are bubbles that are being pulled past the bleed screw threads themselves. Tim, how much fluid has gone through? We've got about a reservoir. About a reservoir. All right, we'll go ahead and shut her down. Let me turn the bleed screw off down here. Now, how do you test a clutch and see if it releases? Right now, the truck is in gear. So if I try and turn the drive shaft, it won't turn. Tim, go ahead and push the clutch pedal to the floor. Now I can turn the drive shaft while it's in gear. This clutch is released. Released is when the pedal is all the way down the floor. Tim, slowly bring the pedal up. There, we started to feel it grab the drive shaft. That's the beginning of the friction zone. So, one more time, all the way down. Released. Ease it up, ease it up. There. Tim, about how much reserve travel have we got? About an inch and a half. Tim's reporting about an inch and a half reserve travel. That's pedal movement off the floorboard before we start to create drag on the clutch disc. This system is released. Engaged. Released. Engaged. Released. That's all the further that bearing moves on this truck to get a complete clutch release and engagement. We're ready to go. If you have any questions about which clutch to select for your application, or any installation questions, or in particular how to bleed that clutch hydraulic release system, look for the quick start guide in your clutch kit. It'll give you the toll-free tech support number and the website address where you can look up the bulletins. Please give us a call, we can help you out.